Okay, so in this last video on completing the square, we're going to be looking at a final application, which is about turning points, which are sometimes called maximum and minimum values. And this gets really, really useful, particularly if you're going to go on and study A-level maths. So it says here that we want to determine the turning point of y equals x squared plus 6x plus 4. Now, the turning point is sometimes called the minimum or the maximum value. And what I've done over here is from Desmos, I have taken a screenshot of this graph, this y equals x squared plus 6x plus 4. So hopefully you remember from your work on quadratics that the turning point is just this bit down here. And actually, when we're talking about the value of this, we're saying about the y coordinate. What is the y coordinate of this graph? Well, at this point, we would say that the minimum value of y is going to be minus 5. So the minimum value is going to be minus 5, and we can see that the turning point is actually the, the coordinate itself. The coordinate itself is minus 3, minus 5. So the turning point is going to be minus 3, minus 5, but the minimum value is actually just going to be minus 5. The value of the function is what the y-coordinate is that it has here. So that's it from a graphical point of view. How would we do it just by looking at this without having to draw the graph? Well, it's going to be completing the square, and we're going to try and figure out why it works in this way. So when I complete the square on this, I'm going to get x plus 3 squared. I'm going to subtract the 9, and I have the plus 4 like this. So that is x plus 3 squared minus 9 plus 4 is minus 5. So this function is y equals x plus 3 squared minus 5. And we're trying to think about when can this whole thing here, when is it going to reach a minimum? It could be a maximum if it was a different kind of graph, but when can it be a minimum? Well, this particular thing that we've got here, we have something that is being squared. And anything squared, Think to yourself, what do we know about things when they are squared? We know that anything squared has got to be greater than or equal to zero. Because if it's a negative number and you square it, it's a positive number. If it's a positive number and you square it, it's a positive number. And if it's zero squared, it could be equal to zero. So you can't get a negative when you square something. So that means that the minimum value that this thing can be overall, the minimum value that this can be, so the minimum is zero, because it's always got to be greater than or equal to zero, which means that the minimum of the thing overall would be minus five. So the overall minimum is going to be when y is equal to, we said this first part, the minimum would be 0, and then a minus 5. So it would be 0 minus 5. So the minimum is just minus 5, which is what we talked about over here. But the next thing is to think about when does it reach this minimum? When is that turning point? Well, the minimum of the whole thing is minus 5, which is when this thing is 0. So we know that x plus 3 has to be equal to 0 for it to be a minimum which means that x is equal to minus 3. x is equal to minus 3, y is equal to minus 5. So the whole point of this completed square, well, not the whole point, but the completed square can show us when something reaches one of these turning points. So it's a bit like when you factorise it, you'd say, oh, well, this thing has to be 0, that means x is minus 3, and the overall thing would be minus 5 for that value. So you get that turning point of minus 3, minus 5. So for our notes here, if y equals a brackets x plus b squared plus c, it doesn't matter about the a in the front, then the turning point will be c for the y coordinate. That will always be the turning point that we have over there. And for the x coordinate, it will be whatever this number is, this whole thing has to equal 0. So x would be minus b. Now, I don't remember this by itself, OK? What I do instead is I think, OK, well, the smallest thing this can be is 0. So that's the other part. And this thing is equal to 0 when this thing is minus b. I don't remember it as minus b, c. Instead, I try and think about what's going on in the question. So let's have a quick go at doing some of these turning points for these ones straight away. These are all going to be examples of minimums. The turning point for this one, it's already in completed square form. Well, the overall that it's going to be is minus 2. That's the smallest thing that it can be. And it's when x is equal to minus 1. So for this one that we have here, the, uh, the overall minimum is going to be 5. And that's when x is equal to 3. 
the overall minimum is going to be 4 from this part here, and that's when this part is 0, in other words, when x is equal to 2. Now, this one, although it might not look it, is already in completed square form. We've got an x by itself, it doesn't need to have the brackets. So the minimum value is going to be minus 3, and that's when this thing is 0, so it's just 0 and minus 3. And this one, it is going to be minus 7 for the y, and when this part here is equal to 0, that is when x is equal to 3. You can actually just imagine substituting in. If x is equal to 3, you get 3 minus 3 squared. Great, that whole thing is 0, and you get minus 7. These actually help you to sketch these graphs as well. I don't think I do any some stuff on sketching. But if we wanted to sketch, say, I don't know, let's do this one here as a sketch, we can see that the minimum point is at 3, 5. So I could say it's going to be roughly over here. It's going to look like this kind of shape. The turning point will be at 3, 5. And you could pretty much work out when x is equal to 0, you would get minus 3 squared, that's 9, plus 5, that is 14, where it crosses it here. And that's the kind of stuff that takes you into more of like an A-level kind of realm of stuff of sketching quadratics. So you don't need this right now, but um, just worth having a think about where this goes in the future. Okay, let's have a go at these ones that we've got down here as well. It says find the minimum value of this function that we've got here. So I'm going to complete the square. So it's going to be x plus 4 squared minus 16 plus 20. So that is x plus 4 squared plus 4. So the minimum value is this bit, 4. So the minimum value is 4. Don't need to actually say that it's when x is equal to minus 4, but I'll say in brackets, this occurs when x equals minus 4, but that bit's not necessary. This time it's asking for the turning point, so it's actually going to want us to find a coordinate, just like we did in this section here. So I'm going to begin by factoring out the minus at the beginning. So that is going to be minus brackets x plus 10, sorry, x squared plus 10x minus 5. This is like the other form that we looked at earlier on in this playlist. So I'm going to say that this is, I would normally say like before, let's just complete the square on that part. So that is going to be x plus 5 squared minus 25. Close off those brackets and have the minus 5. So this is going to be minus brackets x plus 5 squared plus 25 minus 5. So there's the minus and the minus 25 to get the plus. So this leaves us with minus brackets x plus 5 squared plus 20, which we could also write as 20 minus x plus 5 squared. Now this kind of graph is actually going to be, well, let's not put the axes on, it's not going to be this kind of quadratic, it's going to be this kind of quadratic. And the reason that we can tell it's going to be that is because of this negative that we have here. So actually this turning point, not only is it going to be a coordinate, but it's actually going to be a maximum value. And it's a maximum value because of this negative that we've got here. You can also think numerically why it's going to be a maximum value. This thing that we've said is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. So you're subtracting something that is bigger than zero. You're subtracting a positive number from 20, which means it's going to always get smaller than 20. So 20 is definitely going to be the maximum value of that turning point, and we just need to think when this would be equal to 20. Well, it's when this part here would be equal to 0, so when x would be equal to minus 5. Now, they haven't asked us to say if it's a maximum or a minimum, but it's worth noting that this is actually a maximum point in this particular graph that we have here. Okay, this is an example of a maximum point. So I want you to have a quick go at these questions that we've got here. Pause the video and have a go. I want you to write down the turning point and to decide if it's a maximum or a minimum. You're going to do this one and this one here as well. So pause the video and have a go. Okay, so let's go through these pretty quick. The turning point of this is going to be minus 3, minus 7, and this is an example of a minimum. Remember you have these ones or these ones. These will be minimum. And this is when you have a positive x squared part. This is when you have a negative x squared part, and it's going to be a maximum. So this turning point is going to be 1, 5, and it's an example of a minimum. This one has a turning point of 2 for the x and minus 3 for the y, and it's an example of a maximum because of this negative here. 
This one has a turning point where well, the uh, minimum value is 7 over 2 when x is equal to 5. That 2 doesn't do anything in this question. This is an example of a minimum. And this one has a turning point where the 0 is nothing extra and it's when x is equal to minus 1. And this is an example of a maximum point because of the negative here. So we're saying the maximum point is at minus 1, 0. These ones, when I find the maximum value of this, I'm going to complete the square. So I'm going to do x plus 5 squared minus 25 minus 7. So that's x plus 5 squared minus 32. Minus 25 minus 7 is minus 32. And so the maximum value of this, the max, oh, I don't think it should say the maximum value. I think this one actually should say that it is going to be a minimum value. So the question is wrong. My apologies, this one is a minimum value. I'm going to correct it on the original PDF. Um, so this one is going to have a minimum value of minus 32. A minimum value of minus 32, and that's when x is equal to minus 5. So this one is definitely going to be a maximum because the turning point, sorry, because of this negative coefficient that we've got here. So let's complete the square on this by factoring out the minus 2. So I'm dividing by minus 2, so it's going to be minus 2x. Just double check that expands to give you the 4x. Yep, it does. Then I'm going to complete the square on this part in black. So that is going to be minus 2 brackets x minus 1 squared minus 1 minus 5. So it's minus 2 brackets x minus 1 squared, the minus 2 times the minus 1 is a plus 2, and you've still got the minus 5. So it's minus 2, x minus 1 squared, minus 3. So the turning point here is going to be when x is equal to 1, y is minus 3, and it is a maximum. Apologies for this bit being wrong here, but I will correct it in the original PDF. So that's everything that you need to know for completing the square. Um, and I will keep linking some questions for you to do some more practice on this as well. Found this video helpful? Then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. This is the end of the playlist, but head to my channel's homepage to see what else I might be able to help you with. And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.